Hi, and welcome to the Faith Alive Show. I'm Shauna Ray Pierce, and I will be your host. Well, today, Pastor Brent Rodosky is going to be concluding his five-part series on envy, then a messianic moment with Reverend Adam Bureau, and later, Man on the Street, where we go out with Ryan to find out what people have to say on what they do when they start to feel down. Then, a life-changing testimony. So don't go anywhere, and let's see what God has in store for you today. I'll meet you back here at the end of the show to pray with you. Okay, last stuff, how to overcome envy. Who wants to know how to overcome it? This is the conclusion of this sermon. How to, well, number one, we have to get over our, our, we'll get over our identity crisis. Okay, that's number one. Say number one. So you have to be rooted and grounded in God's love. You have to know the width, the height, the length, the depth, the breadth, and all that. And the more you know that, and that's why we have to pursue love. You have to pursue God's love for yourself so that you can be grounded in it, rooted in it, understanding in it, so that when something good happens to someone else, you have no problem with that. You have God's love attached to you. You can look at someone and say, way to go. I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad you got the promotion. It's okay if I didn't get one because you know what? God loves me. And you have to come to know that. You have to know that. That's identity. You know who you are. So you're rooted. You're grounded in it. What happens to someone else is of no significance to you. Because you also know number two, if you want to get over your envy, is realize that God owns everything. And that he has no trouble getting it to you. If that person gets a position, or that person gets money, or that person gets blessed, or that person gets that, it don't matter. God doesn't have limited goods. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So you get a couple, I'll get the rest. It doesn't matter. The Bible said God owns everything. There's nothing he doesn't own. There's nothing he can't do. There's nothing he's lacking. He's not up there scratching his head saying, oh my gosh, I guess you'll never get that position. You'll never get that promotion. You'll never get that thing. I've run out. Listen, God doesn't run out. See, but if we have a limited goods thinking, so you've got to be delivered from limited good. See, limited good comes from a limited carnal heart, right? So the more we get in God, the more love we get of Him, the more the bigger we see Him, the greater He becomes, the more in-depth relationship we have. All of a sudden, all those things don't matter. So what if that guy gets a million bucks? What do I care? God wants to give me a million, He'll give it to me. It don't matter. God gets to preach. He gets to do this. He becomes a pastor. He gets to travel. He writes a book. He gets famous. It don't matter to me. And it doesn't matter to me. God wants me to do it. He'll do it. And if he doesn't, I'm fine with that too. My joy and help and strength in life does not come from those things. How about you? I dare say for many people, that's not the case. For many, many people, that's not the case. And to me, they miss, they miss the foundational truth of the gospel. They miss the foundational truth of this relationship with Christ. You can't tell me you have a great relationship with Christ and have envy in your heart. Because you're not trusting God, you're trusting man. Lack of faith is at the root of envy. If you get mad because someone else got something good, now it's a lack of faith, so God can't do that for you? No way. How can I be envious of someone else when I know God would do the same for me? So we need to honor someone else. Last scripture, 1 Peter 2.1. So put away all 
envy. Say, put away. So you know what? We need to recognize envy in our lives and deal with it. And you know, we'll be a lot happier. Don't envy sinners. And love does not envy. Let's stand up. Band, come on up here. Thank you, Lord. How many of you can see that? I'll be honest. There's times I've had envy start to happen in my life. You know, sometimes as ministers, I mean, in my position, as a pastor, you can envy another church. Maybe that there's bigger or they got more things happening. Or there's times I've envied Steve Gray and his ministry. And you can envy all kinds of things, can't you? But you always got to go back and let that, let that go and realize, you know what? God can do whatever he wants here in us. And I think when you find that place and you begin to understand that and you find that place of peace, you find that place where you know that whatever happens is up to God in your life in that sense and that he's looking after you. You can let go of envy, can't you? Shalom and welcome to Messianic Moment, your connection to understanding the Hebrew cultural roots of the Bible. The well-known phrase, the joy of the Lord is your strength, found in Nehemiah 8.10, has long served as a word of encouragement to believers. The context of this passage, however, has been largely overlooked. You see, after 70 years of captivity, prophecy was being fulfilled. The people of Israel were returning to the promised land to rebuild Jerusalem. Under the leadership of the governor Nehemiah, they were restoring their once desolate home. Having reconstructed the city's walls, they then gathered to hear the words of the Torah read by the scribe Ezra. Their spiritual foundation had to be rebuilt as well. As they heard the words of the law, their hearts were broken and they began to weep as they recognized their sin. What an exciting moment for Nehemiah and Ezra as leaders. You would think that they would have encouraged the people in their repentance, but we find quite the opposite to be true. They were told not to weep, but take joy in the Lord. You see, this was the first day of the seventh month, Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. Ezra and Nehemiah told the people to stop weeping, not because there isn't a time and a place for godly repentance, but because this was a holy day. God had appointed special times to meet with his children, and that day was just such a day. While there's a time to weep, as the Bible declares, we, the people of God, can rest assured that he has appointed a time to visit us. As the apostle declares, repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, and so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. If there's true repentance in our hearts as there were in the people of Nehemiah's day, we may indeed be strengthened in the joy of the Lord, refreshed by his very presence. Thank you for joining us for this segment of Messianic Moment. Shalom. Hey, I'm not a hypocrite. I am not two-faced. I do not hate people who are different than me. I believe the Bible is real and applies today. I serve a living God, not a doctrine of my own making. I believe Jesus is the only way to salvation and eternal life begins now. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is biblical. The power of God did not end with the apostles and healing is for today. I serve God with my heart and energy, and I pray to a God who's alive and hears me. I go to church because I want to, not because I have to. I believe in being selfless, not selfish, teamwork, not individualism, and that the work of the ministry should be done by everyone, not just the pastors. I serve a glorious king, not a baby in a manger. I serve Jesus with all my heart, soul, and body. My name is Bryn, and I am Christian. Man on the street. Okay, so when you're down or feeling low, what makes you feel better? Music. My friends. I'm talking to my friends and family. Taking time and just thinking about the situation, and usually you can find a lot of perspective. Uh, it's all relative. Okay, so when you're down or feeling low or in the dumps, something like that, what makes you happy? 
Um, well, I like to play drums, so doing something I enjoy, uh, hanging out with friends I find, doing something kind of getting active. Prayer. Pray. Hanging out with my best friend. Doing live interviews. I guess so. Friends, family, reading books about dragons. Uh, usually pr just pursuing my passions like reading, drawing, dancing, fencing, that sort of thing. Like, like vinyl fencing or? Uh, like sword fighting. What makes you happy? Hanging out with my friends, um, worship, D definitely worship makes me a lot, really happy. I love spending time with people, building relationships, going to church. Things I'm passionate about. What makes you happy? Um, the people I surround myself with, I guess, yeah. Positive people, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So no negative people. <laughs> well, they help you, you look at the good things in life, I guess, so. Negative people are fine too. <laughs> Very philosophical, it's good. What makes you happy? Being on the ice. Love skating. Um, but happiness, uh, helping others, uh, doing, doing things in my community. Uh, I'm, like I said to you earlier, I'm from London, Ontario, and uh, we do a lot of mission work and uh, get out and help the community. So how do you feel when someone you know is promoted above you at work or gets something that you really wanted but you didn't get? I feel motivated because, you know, they got it, obviously, instead of me for some reason. Like, maybe they worked harder, so I just need to work harder and keep training, and then I'll get to where they are. Yeah, I think it would feel lousy. Honestly, jealous, but again, if I'm their friend, I have to support them, and I'm going to be there for them no matter what. I feel good for them. I feel a little, little lower than them, I guess. It makes, um, it makes me feel proud for them. Uh, at times jealous, I'm not going to lie, but I definitely want to be happy for them. It depends. Uh, if I have a resentment for that, that would have come out of uh, previous circumstances. And so if you have worked hard enough to receive that, then you should deserve it. And uh, if you haven't, then I don't think there's any reason that I should resent what they got because of their hard work. That's a great answer. I don't know, it doesn't really bother me much because I don't really care what other people have that I don't. Right, so what think I about have it. is what I have and that makes me happy. You find that place where you know that whatever happens is up to God in your life, in that sense, and that He's looking after you. You can let go of envy, can't you? And that's what we got to do. I want everyone to put their hands out like this, like you got envy. You might say, well, I don't have envy. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But this is how you release it. You let it go. You just let it go. It's, a, it's really that simple. You just let it go. You may start to feel it in your heart. You start to see. Let it go. Envy will drive you crazy. It'll drive you up the wall. How many of you want peace? You want true peace? You got to give up. And I want to encourage you to learn to rejoice with someone else's success. Learn to be happy when someone else is honored. Learn to be happy when someone else... I think sometimes we hate people just because they're more successful than we are. Sometimes we just we look at someone, er, you know... Why do I don't, how come I just like that person? Or how come I just like that ministry? How come I just like that guy? Sometimes it's just because they did, they got successful. And we didn't like it. And our hearts get all funny, don't they? So Father, I pray for our church right now, Lord. Every person here today. That Lord, we would deal with envy in our hearts. That we will not allow it. I'm going to ask the prayer guys to come right now. Father, we will not allow envy to take root in our hearts. And Father, if it started today, even in a small way or a small manner, Father, if it started out maybe as jealousy, just simple jealousy or simple coveting or simple I want something, you know what, Lord, help us deal with it today. Help us pull it out by the roots today. Father, we don't want to allow envy into our hearts because we don't want to have disorder and every kind of evil. We don't want to have that in our midst. Lord, we want unity. We want love. We want strength. And Father, we want to walk in love toward each other. And Father, we can only do that by getting rid of all envy in our lives. So Father, right now I pray, Father, touch envy in our lives and pull it out. Pull it out. Father, forgive us for being envious. Forgive us, Lord, for being jealous. Forgive us, Lord, for 
over desiring or having selfish ambition Lord Father forgive us for wanting something more than we need to now Lord if you want to give it if you want to bring it if you want to promote us if you want to honor us Lord then let it be but Lord we don't have to fight for it we don't have to strive for it we don't have to put someone else down for it nor do we have to defend ourselves and defend our position father we are safe we are secure in you Christ our rock took me out of the miry clay and set my feet on a rock amen so you know what if that's you today you say you know what I want to be on that rock again you say you know what I think I've been affected by this sermon I've had some envy you know what don't be embarrassed today we've all had it and I encourage you to come get prayer get rid of it release it today in Jesus name come right now come get rid of it right now get rid of all jealousy get rid of all malice get rid of all hatred get rid of all evil get rid of all sin come on let's get it out of our hearts and our lives for good forever and ever amen hi i'm mike and i want to talk to you today about how god has changed my life growing up as a teen i was rebellious against my parents you know, I got into fights and arguments with them and I ended up moving out at a young age and the relationship between me and them were, was broken. I didn't talk to them for a couple years and so I ended up going and moving on and going to college and so I was in college at the time and I entered the party scene, you know, I was doing drugs, I was drinking alcohol and just partying and uh, that lifestyle just weighed on me it just the weight of the, of that life just it just pulled me down it was just sucking my life right out of me and even though i was going to school i couldn't see a future i couldn't see you know my purpose i couldn't see who i was going to be 5 you know 10 years from that moment and all i kept kept picturing was the people that i hurt and the life that i was living and so one time i remember laying up at night and thinking to myself, you know, if I could just change everything, change, change it all. If I could just change the things that I said and the people that I hurt, I would in a heartbeat. But I didn't know how. And so I kept living that life and I just kept going through the motions until one night I finally broke and I broke and I said to God, I cried out to God and I said to him, you know, if you are real, God, I want you. I want to know who you are. I want to know what you have for my life. You know, I want you to show me this life that you have. And in that moment, he came and his presence filled that room and just completely changed my life. He melted my heart and he took away every bit of hurt, every bit of rejection, every bit of anger that I had. And you know, I always knew that Jesus was the savior of the world. He was the forgiver of sins. But that moment, that night, I knew that he was real. I knew that he was the forgiver of sins. I just felt like he washed me completely clean. He, he started my whole life over again. He forgot everything that I had ever done. And his love just poured out on me. And that moment changed my life forever. From that moment, he, you know, restored that relationship with my parents and he gave me purpose. He gave me life. You know, I begin to see who he's, be, who he's called me to be and who he's made me to be. And now I just want to live my life for him. I, you know, I just want to serve him all the days of my life. and ruler of time Come and rule this heart of mine King of the heavens, land and the
If something we've said today has touched your heart and you want to know God in a greater way, you can. Pray this prayer with me. God, we believe that you sent Jesus to be the Savior of the world. We need you in our lives and we want to make room for you. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us and make us new. We want to walk in the path that you have for us. And from this moment on, we will serve you with all of our hearts. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or you're rededicating your life back to God again, I want to encourage you, if you're in the Saskatoon area, please visit us at Faith Alive Family Church or in your area, get plugged in to a Bible-believing church where you can learn more about God and the life He has for you. God bless. Wasn't that a fantastic show? If you want to watch more of the Faith Alive show, you can visit us at faithalive.tv. I'd like to take a moment now and just pray with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray right now that if there's any envy in our hearts, that you would start to take it out right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you would remove any selfish motives and that anything that would hinder the kingdom of God would be stopped right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So make sure to tune in next week for the Faith Alive show. We'll see you then. At Faith Alive Bible College, we believe that everyone has the God-given destiny to live. Our passion is to prepare you with the tools, knowledge, and experience needed to succeed in every area of life and ministry. Our curriculum will challenge you to be transformed by God and empower you through immersion in His Holy Spirit. Study on campus, by correspondence, or online. Faith Alive Bible College. Your destiny starts here.